In today's video, we'll talk about George Russell's stunning F1 sacrifice after a horrific moment. We all know what happened at Silverstone this weekend. There was a horrific crash right at the beginning of the race. Joe's Alfa Romeo catapulted upside down, and then Russell rushed towards the Chinese rookie racer, thus sacrificing his points. So sit back, grab your popcorn, while we take you on a journey through the horrific crash at the start of the race. Firstly, let's talk about how Russell sacrificed his race for Joe. At the start of the race, there was a terrible terrible accident involving five cars, but more on that later. First, let's discuss George Russell's heroic act that cost him and his team points at Silverstone. When the crash happened, Joe's Alfa Romeo slid sideways on the gravel, then was catapulted in between the barriers as he was stuck upside down in his car. He couldn't get out on his own. He's safe now, thanks to the halo, but more on that later too. As soon as this crash happened, which was caused by Joe's Alfa Romeo hitting Russell's Mercedes, George Russell got out of his car and went on to help Joe. When Russell went back to his car after ensuring that Joe was okay, he couldn't get the car to start, so he ran back to his team to ensure everything was okay. As he left, he told the race marshals to leave the car and not let it go anywhere as he'll be back soon. When he came back, though, he saw his car on the flatbed. He was incredibly frustrated. The fact that the marshals had recovered his car meant an automatic retirement. Mercedes appealed to the FIA that under the red flag, Russell should have been allowed to start, but all their appeals were tossed away. The thing is, as soon as you get help, you can't restart the race, even though the only problem was a puncture. Speaking to the news afterward, Russell stated, apparently as soon as you get assistance, you can't restart, so it's very frustrating because the car just had the puncture. There's no doubt we had the pace to come back to P6 today. So Russell was confident he and Mercedes would have at least been able to secure P6. This is unfortunate because Lewis Hamilton had a wonderful race. He overtook quite a lot of people, especially at the end to finish in P3. So if Russell or Mr. Consistency, as he's known informally, for finishing all his races between P6 and P4, it would have been a wonderful weekend for Mercedes and they wouldn't have lost as many points in the Constructors' Championship. When he was speaking about the crash, the words he chose to describe it were absolutely horrific. We're just glad that everyone involved is all okay. Russell showed amazing bravery and sportsmanship. Fans of all teams have lauded his actions. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about the crash. Okay, so the crash was just just terrible. It involved not one, not two, but five cars. The cars involved in the crash were George Russell's Mercedes, Esteban Ocon's Alpine, Pierre Gasly's Alfa Tori, and the Williams' Alex Albon. Everyone involved in the crash was okay, especially Joe. Since he slid on the gravel for quite a few meters before getting stuck sideways in the barrier, his car was completely thrashed. But because of F1's wonderful safety measures, he walked fully healthy. Despite such a crash, he claims he's fully ready for Austria. The accident happen when Pierre Gasly tried to enter a tiny gap between Joe and Russell in an attempt to overtake them both. This move startled Russell, who then hit the brakes and turned a little bit. This led him to tapping Joe's Alfa Romeo, which then caused the horrific crash. Everyone else involved in the crash just became the victims of the haphazard situation. After the crash, Alfa Romeo radioed Valtteri Bottas to let him know that Joe was conscious and that he was talking. They also informed him that there were no fractures and considering the circumstances of the crash, he was doing quite well. Williams' Alex Albon was taken to the hospital as well as a precaution, but he was all okay too. Lastly, the once unpopular Halo saved Joe's life on Sunday. So the reason why Sunday's accident is etched in people's minds is that if it wasn't for the widely unpopular Halo, chances are that the crash would have been fatal. The reason why Joe was able to walk scratch-free from the accident was that the FIA made the team put in a piece of hardware on their car that was widely unpopular in the beginning. Even Mercedes boss Toto Wolff was against it at the start. First, let's discuss what Halo is and why it was implemented. Halo is a wishbone-shaped bar made of titanium. It's integrated with the chassis of the car and it wraps around the driver's head, kind of like a bar of metal protecting the driver's head. The Halo is an extremely strong piece of hardware. It is designed to sustain 12 tons of weight on just a 7-kilogram carbon fiber-covered frame. How much is 12 tons? Well, it's the equivalent of a London double-decker bus. The Halo became mandatory in 2018. However, initially, there was a lot of resistance from the team. In 2016, when they were testing the idea of a halo, Hamilton called it the worst-looking modification in the sport's history. Toto Wolff of Mercedes said he would destroy the halo if he could with a chainsaw. But then in 2021, Hamilton finally admitted that the halo saved his life in his crash in the Italian Grand Prix. Even Joe mentioned, before the race even ended, how useful the halo was. Just an hour or so after he was extracted from the car, he posted a picture 
picture of him smiling on Twitter. In the caption of the photo, he mentioned how the Halo saved his life. F1 fans also flocked to the platform to talk about the usefulness of the safety measure. All right, now that we've told you all about Russell's heroic act and the horrific crash, let's move on to some other news coming to you straight from the world of F1. Firstly, Alpine aims to get more women into F1. Renault-owned Alpine has now launched a program to increase the number of women in their F1 team. They also plan to help female drivers reach the top for the first time in half a century. Until now, only two women have ever started an F1 race since the championship began. Two, that's low. CEO of Alpine, Laurent Rossi, has said that his team wants to debunk myths by giving women the same opportunity as men. He has also acknowledged that by excluding women from the F1 team, they are losing out on a lot of talent. And it's not just the drivers. He wants to increase the women working for his team overall. Alpine now plans to take the number of women working in their company from 12% to 30% within five years. Jamie Chadwick, champion of all women W Series, also wants to see more women in Formula One, but she feels that structural changes need to be made to the car to accommodate women. Whatever the case is, we truly hope to see more women in F1 soon. Secondly, Netflix has made F1 bolder. Netflix's dramatic docuseries on F1 called Drive to Survive was a complete game changer for the sport. It increased viewership by quite a lot. The show just catapulted the sport into massive fame. Now F1 is more of a global phenomenon. To show how powerful the sport has gotten after the series, ESPN has now reached an agreement to renew its rights to broadcast F1 through 2025. How much will they pay? 75 to 90 million dollars a year. How much were they paying before? Just over 5 million dollars. That's an increase of over 16 times. The reason why F1 has had the guts to ask for so much money is because of their increasing popularity. Firstly, the 2021 season was the most watched season in America's history. Secondly, throughout the 2021 season, F1 averaged close to a million viewers per race. That record has completely shattered the previous record of 750,000 viewers per race that was set back in, wait for it, 1995. Lastly, was Silverstone the most exciting race ever? The Silverstone race was thrilling. So much action, so much drama packed in just one race. Us fans couldn't have asked for more. We're also quite sure that people will talk about this race for years to come. There were two people, other than Joe, that will never forget this race though, Carlos Sainz and Mick Schumacher. Carlos Sainz turned pole into first on Sunday's race to win his first ever Grand Prix, Ferrari's first win in ages. Things are looking up for Sainz. Haas's Mick Schumacher also had a wonderful race as he finished eighth. This may not sound so significant, but it was the first time in his career that he's gotten points. Driving for Haas and being relatively young, the sport hasn't been the nicest to him. But looks like his better days are about to begin. But you all know what we're already thinking about. Next weekend's GP in Austria. Stay tuned to find out more. Well, that's all we have for you guys today. Do you think George Russell should have been allowed to start the race? Let us know all your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. See you guys next time. Bye.